In a previous video, we hosted Ansible inside a Docker container, and we were able to ping all the virtual machines listed in our inventory file. Today, we will take it a step further. We will modify the script so that the container can log in to the remote virtual machines without using a password. To achieve this, we will go through the complete process of generating an SSH key and configuring every virtual machine. This time, we will be working with cloud init virtual machines instead of standard ones. The reason is simple. Using cloud init will allow us to fully automate the flow, from creating a VM to configuring it, with tools like Terraform and Ansible in the future. We will be doing this setup in Proxmox, but the method will work anywhere you want. You just need the IP addresses of your device. So let us begin and see the process step by step. Before we start setting up passwordless SSH login, let's take a quick look at where we are right now. If you have followed my previous video on Ansible, you should already have this set up with the files and directories we created earlier. After that, we also worked with cloud init VMs inside Proxmox. And moving forward, we will be using those because cloud init VMs can be configured even before starting them. That means we can automatically deploy cloud init VMs using Terraform and then configure them with Ansible without needing to step in manually at any stage. Now, here's something important. We can actually run the Ansible container from any machine, including the same machine that needs to be configured. To make things simple, I copied all the Ansible files to an NFS share and then mounted that share to a new cloud init VM inside Proxmox. This way, whenever we update our Ansible configuration, we can just attach that NFS share to a new VM, run the script directly, and it will always have the latest code. On top of that, I've also installed Docker inside this VM. If you want to watch any of the earlier videos I mentioned, you can find the links in the description or by clicking on the i button at the top right corner. So with this setup in place, we are now ready to move ahead. First of all, let's get started by preparing the SSH keys. I'm creating a directory here and naming it keys. Now I'll right click on it and choose open an integrated terminal. That opens up the terminal directly in this keys directory path. Here I'll type SSH keygen and then specify dash T ED25519. This is the algorithm we'll be using for generating our keys. After that, I'll add dash C followed by my username. Next, we need to define where these keys will be generated. By default, keys get created inside the SSH directory under home, but we want them here inside this keys folder. So I'll mention dash F and then give the path as dot slash, followed by the file name ID underscore ED25519. Now if I press enter, it will ask for a passphrase. You can add one for extra security, but for this demo, I'll leave it empty and just press enter. It will ask again to confirm, so I'll press enter once more. That should generate our SSH keys. Now, if we check inside the keys directory, you can see both the private and the public key files. The one ending with .pub is the public key. Make sure to keep a backup of these files somewhere safe because you will need them later. Now, we need to provide access to this keys directory for our Ansible container. To do that, I'll open the Docker Compose file. Under the volume section, I'll add another entry, which will point to the dot slash key directory. As you can see, my folder here is named as keys, but I'm writing key on purpose. This means without proper access, Ansible won't be able to make the connection. It also helps us to see what files get created separately before we map the correct directory. Now we will map this directory from the host to the slash root slash dot SSH directory inside the container. That's all we need to do to generate the keys and bind them to the Ansible container. Once we have tested it, we'll replace it with the correct keys directory. Now that we have our SSH keys ready, let's see how we can configure cloud init virtual machines in Proxmox with a public key. So let's switch over to Proxmox. Here you can see the cloud init VM template, which we will be working with. If you're not using cloud init VMs or even Proxmox itself, don't worry. I'll also show you a couple of other ways to configure non-cloud init VMs for passwordless SSH login. But for now, let's move step by step with this setup. I'll quickly clone three virtual machines from this template. 
And once the VMs are ready, I will select one of them and move to the Cloud Init tab. Here, you'll notice the option for SSH public key. I already had one added to the template, so that's showing up here. But in your case, this section might be empty. Since we created a fresh SSH key, I'll clear this out. Now you have two ways to add your key. You can either directly click on load SSH key file and select your .pub file, or if the file isn't accessible from your system, you can simply open the .pub file, copy the entire content, and then paste it here in Proxmox. Once the key is pasted, just click on OK. This step configures our public SSH key for the VM, but for Ansible to connect properly, we also need to set up the IP address. So let's click on IP config. Under IPv4, select static, then enter the IP address you want for your VM, along with the subnet mask for your network. After that, provide the gateway address and click on OK. To apply the changes, we need to click on Regenerate Image. We'll repeat the same process for Prod2 and Prod3 as well. Just remember to assign different IP addresses for each machine. Now, if you are not working with Cloud Init VMs or Proxmox, you still have options. You can run the command ssh-copy-id with a path to your public key, your username, and a remote host IP to add the key automatically. Or you can copy the key manually and paste it into the authorized underscore keys file under the .ssh directory in the user's home folder. Now that we have added our public key to the remote machines, the next step is to start all the VMs. Once the VMs are up and running, let's move back to VS Code and open the inventory file. Here I have already updated the IP addresses for each machine according to the configuration we set earlier in the VMs. Since we are now using passwordless login, we no longer need the Ansible password parameter. So I will go ahead and remove it. We can also clean things up a little more by removing the Ansible host key checking parameter from this file. I'll first copy the parameter name, then remove it from here. And we'll set it directly in the Docker Compose file. So let's open that file, add an environment section, and place the Ansible host key checking variable under it with a value set to false. It is always a good practice to keep environment variables in uppercase, so they are easier to identify. To do that, we can simply select the variable, then press Control shift p and search for the Transform to uppercase option. This will automatically convert it for us. And since we're no longer using SSH with a password, let's go ahead and open the Docker file and remove the SSH pass package. Now let's also check if there are any updated versions for Python or Ansible. I'll start by opening Google. First, let's look for Python. So I'll search Python Docker Hub and open the link to the official Docker Hub page. On this page, if you scroll down to the shared tag section, you can see the latest version that will be pulled. Right now, 3.13.7 is listed as the latest. But since I want to use the Alpine image, I'll scroll up to the 3.13.7 Alpine section. Here you can see Alpine 3.22 is the most recent. So I'll copy this image tag and paste it directly into the Docker file. Next, let's look at the Ansible version. Again, I'll go to Google and search for PyPI. From there, I'll open the official PyPI website. In the search bar, type Ansible, and then open the first result here you can see 11.9.0 is the latest release. Let's copy this version. You can also check older versions on the same page if you ever need to roll back. For now, I'll paste the updated version into the Docker file. Now, whenever we update or rebuild a Docker image, there's a simple step to follow. Let's open the Docker Compose file. Right next to the image name, we can add a colon and mention a version tag. For example, I'll name it Ansible colon v1.0. This way, whenever you make changes in the Docker file, you can just update the version tag in the Docker Compose file, and it will rebuild the image with a new configuration. Now we are ready to test the script. You should already have the run.sh file from the previous video, so let's go ahead and run it from the terminal. I'll first navigate back to the Ansible directory where the script is located, and then execute the command dot slash run.sh. At this point, it will try to pull the image, but since this is our custom image, 
it will actually build it for us. Once the build is complete, it will start the Ansible Docker container. But here is something important. Since we provided the keys directory as our SSH keys folder, Ansible won't be able to log into those virtual machines just yet. But we can see what's happening there. If you check the new key directory created inside the container, you'll notice it has generated a known underscore hosts file. This is a good sign because it means the SSH setup is working as expected, and now we just need to properly bind the keys directory. But before we do that, let me delete the directory that was created. You won't be able to remove it normally, so you'll need to use sudo to delete it. Once that's cleared, let's open the docker compose file and make a quick change. Here, we will modify the key directory to keys, then save the file. And now run the script again. This time, Ansible is able to ping the virtual machine successfully using passwordless SSH login. So now we are able to connect to other virtual machines without needing a password. If you found this helpful, make sure to check out the next video, where we'll dive into more advanced steps beyond just pinging the machines. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so share them in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated. If you run into any issues, you can always join our Discord server for help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.